the stillness of this RAF base will soon be broken. The military strategists here will choose their moment. And when that hour comes, tornado jets will tear into the sky, fully armed and ready to attack. The nose to the left. Their first sorties were sanctioned by Parliament, politicians deciding it had to be done. The eyes to the right, 524. The nose to the left, 43. So the eyes have it. For the now, the British airstrikes will only target Islamic State in Iraq. The mission will inevitably evolve, and it could last up to three years. Militarily, we're bringing some, some pretty unique capabilities with the tornado. Uh, the weapons fit it's got. Uh, it's, I don't think any other nation other than the United States has got such a capable a weapons platform as, uh, as the Tornado is. Um, even though we're only producing six uh, of those aircraft, I think the Americans will value them. For the past month, the Tornadoes have flown humanitarian and reconnaissance missions over Iraq. That work will continue and may guide future bombing raids. The RAF crews, their jets and the missiles were already in place. They were here awaiting orders. But there is now a fundamental difference. Those British teams are again going to war. If Britain has now joined the supporting cast, America still holds the leading role. And they've said air power alone may not be enough. Our coalition strikes this week demonstrate to ISIL that they have no safe haven in Syria. Our targeted actions are disrupting ISIL's command and control, their logistics capabilities, and their infrastructure in Syria. While in Iraq, we're empowering our Iraqi partners to go back on the offensive. There has to be a ground component to the campaign against ISIL in Syria, and we believe that the path to develop that is the Syrian moderate opposition. Every airstrike will be guided by precision. The catch is that nobody knows precisely what their wider impact will be. Tom Parmenter, Sky News, RAF Akrotiri.